How's it going, everybody? It's Josh, KI6NAZ. We're back in the Ham Shack again, talking about the newest SDR by SDR Play, the RSP DX, which is their new model, just came out, a lot of improvements on the last gen, and we're gonna talk about it today and do a bit of a demonstration. So if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that when I cut over to an SDR screen. Okay, so all this activity, all these waterfall um, spaces here is 40 meters. It's likely this guy right here, the RSP-1A, which I've had for a while now, and I really, really enjoy it. It's a really nice SDR. It's probably my favorite SDR that I have in my shack. It's a much better performer than the USB dongles that we've talked about in the past. Those are good options because they're cheap. The RSP-1 is about $100 now in the States, and you can find them on HRO. Speaking of the ham radio outlet, big thanks to them for letting me take a look at the RSP DX here. And so far I have uh, really enjoyed it, but don't worry about that. Let's cover some of the specs and then we'll do a demonstration. So as mentioned, the RSP DX is the replacement to the RSP2 and the RSP2 Pro, which puts it right in the middle of the RSP1 and the RSP Duo. The RSP1 being a single antenna, single tuner, the RSP Duo, two tuners, multiple antenna inputs, and the RSP DX, two SMA connections and one BNC connection. The key point on all the SDR plays is that they generally go from one kilohertz to two gigahertz. This is a fully featured receiving SDR. And note on that, this is a receiver. This is for those of you that like to monitor the amateur radio bands, uh, broadcast AM, FM, they'll work as a pan adapter. A lot of people like to use the RSP-1A as a pan adapter on their radios that don't have a screen, like my 7300. And name it, you can pretty much monitor whatever it is going on at the RF bands uh, with the appropriate antenna to match. But that's why they're so much fun, is that you get to visually see it, and that's why I like uh, SDR so much, is that you put an SDR in front of somebody that's new to RF and they get to experience the fun of radio both visually and audibly we know it's audibly of course but seeing it visually for the first time i think really kind of puts things together in people's heads so that's one of the reasons i like it i like being able to see when i'm poking around and all that and to poke around all of these devices run off of the SDR Uno software, which we're gonna show off a little bit here later. So covering some of the specs, I'll give kind of the, the one that kind of separates it from the pack is that it has additional filtering on the lower end of the RF spectrum. This is something that the RSP Duo doesn't even have, which makes it a really nice choice. It's DX for a reason, but really nice choice for DXing on those lower bands, which is interesting for a lot of people. They haven't even experienced it yet. And this does high dynamic range as well, which again, it will allow you to kind of sort through some of that noise when you are in those lower bands that are generally pretty noisy. Some of the major step ups from the RSP1 to the RSP DX is that the DX has six notch filters and a host of bandpass filtering that the RSP1 does not have. Now, RSP1 is still a completely acceptable SDR, but the RSP DX, you know, a little, little notch higher there in its capability for filtering. And like I said, it already has that low end filtering to go along with that as well, something the Duo doesn't have, which is a more expensive SDR. At the time of recording, the RSP DX is $200 on the Ham Radio Outlet website, putting it about $100 more expensive than the RSP 1A. Do you get twice the SDR? Well, in a lot of cases you do. You get multiple antenna options. You get a metal enclosure, which some claim that that's better for RFI, which <laughs> you know I'm all about RFI suppression. I I'm not sure about that, but it is a lot uh, sturdier, it's heavier in the hand, that metal case. I really do like that more than the plastic case. Um, I do have a favoring towards multiple antenna inputs on SDRs. Not many of them offer that until you start getting into the bigger dollars. The RSP DX being kind of the $200 sweet spot in which you get access to that. One clarification on the antenna ports, the SMA connectors will take you all the way through one kilohertz to two gigahertz. However, the BNCs will take you from one kilohertz to 200 megahertz. And that's likely, I'm just guessing, due to the connector based on when you get to the higher frequency bands, 
starts not doing that great. So that's likely why the BNC does not go up that high. If you're thinking about purchasing an SDR Play, they have a handy little graph, which we'll talk about briefly, that covers the comparison between the RSP1, the RSP DX, and the RSP Duo. Basically, all the SDRs are one kilohertz through two gigahertz. They have one uh, 10 megahertz visible bandwidth. They're all 14-bit SDRs. There's a number of things that they all have in common. And as you start to go further down that list, that's where the RSP DX will have things that the RSP 1A doesn't have or the RSP Duo and vice versa. Again, RSP DX has the 50, BN, uh, 50 ohm BNC connection. So with this list, you can basically kind of neat dial into what it is you actually are looking for in an SDR. The big thing, again, that the SDR DX has that the others don't is the filtering for low frequency and very low frequency, everything below 50 kilohertz. Of course, that does require uh, the SDR Uno software to fully take advantage of, particularly if you're using that high dynamic range capability. So enough of my jibber jabber, let's throw this over to the computer and show you what this looks like on your home screen. I am using Windows. The RSP Uno software is only for Windows at this time, so keep that in mind as well. You can use the SDR plays with other SDR software. I just happen to like the SDR Uno, so this is just a hat tip to the Windows people. Uh, you're gonna get a little bit of better experience from my point of view, although it works in other applications. So the first thing you're gonna do after you connect your SDR Play with a USB cable and your antenna, you're gonna see this uh, center waterfall here with a red arrow. You're gonna just click off of that a bit, clears everything out, and you're gonna hit play. Uh, I happen to be on the band. If you click on band, ham lower, I'm on the 40 meter band. Where did I just go? There we go, we're on 40. And I have lower sideband selected with a thousand kilohertz filter and we can see all kinds of signals out there so fine-tuning I just clicked on it kind of for a gross uh, selection of frequency you can narrow this down but I find some of the easiest ways to go is just hover over the number you want to change and just scroll your wheel and then I'll dial it right in so that's a Japanese station. You got a great signal, like I said, five and nine. And uh, thanks for taking the call. Go ahead and uh, happy new year to you as well. Okay, okay. Uh, as you've jumped around the bands a little bit, uh, keep in mind too, we're, I'm on an HF antenna. If I wanted to, I could go to the upper bands, like 70 centimeters, 2 meters, 1.25 meters, etc. Uh, I don't have an antenna hooked up for those right now. And if I did, one of the first things I'd do is go over here to the RF gain toggle or, or uh, slider, and I'd bring that down some to bring up the RF gain. And, or sorry, bring up the RF gain. And basically, you're going to do that when you switch to, like, broadcast stations or something local. For instance, let's go to a broadcast station. So go back to bands, bring up broadcast, and we'll go medium wave. So here's one of my favorite stations, AM640. I have a big... Uh... It's a large land mass with not population in Alaska, so the spacing is different. So just adjust it until you get to a potential overload point, which... I'm not getting an overload. Sometimes it will display right here, overload. And if that happens, you just lower it down some. But if you open it up, you get a great signal. So we're 20K kilohertz right now. Yeah, that's coast to coast AM. And you can hop around all these frequencies. Scroll the wheel. But let's hop around the uh, shortwave bands a little bit. 49 is usually pretty good. So if you go in here and lower this down to 8,000, you usually get a better signal. So just knock that filter down to 8,000. So let's check out some of those low frequency bands. If we go back to bands, ham lower, sorry, broadcast. Let's start there. We'll go down to lower wave. Uh, we'll adjust our RF gain a bit. Uh, it looks like we've got some bit of data going on. Let's flip that over to HDR. Again, I'm just clicking the bands button. HDR. 
this is uh, 340. Looks like we got some kind of digital tones. So if you wanted to, say, type in your own frequency, let's say we wanted to check the time, uh, we can do that simply enough by clicking on the frequency and just typing in where you want to go. And we have a bit of a adjacent station, so we can narrow that down. Go to a 6,000 filter. So it's in there. So if you watch uh, right here in the RSP Uno Ox SP window, click on notch, and you see a nice notch pop in here. If I wanted to move that, hold down Control and Shift, and I can click it around. And so that notch is handy if you're on adjacent signal, you can kind of squelch that out with notch one on. So I'll mention this since I have you. Uh, you have control over your AGC. I usually leave it on slow unless I'm looking at digital, and that's controllable here which you can speed it up or slow it down or change the sensitivity. Your noise blanker is controlled right here and it is adjusted on this side. Your noise reducer also is controlled here, which is right there. And when you add that in, you can kind of change if you see that, oh, by the way, if I mentioned, the screens are modular. <laughs> so if you accidentally move, um, sometimes you'll get, oh, we got the blip. There's the uh, propagation blip that just came flying across. So that's fun to see on the screen. That's what that is, if you've ever seen that blip across. So the SDR Play RSP DX is perfectly fit kind of right in between the more expensive RSP Duo and the RSP 1A. They're all a good value. They're all good receivers. One may fit into your shack uh, better than others. I suggest you try one out, as I would say any SDR. I, I really do like SDRs. These ones, though, are special to me. STR Play makes really good stuff, and I, I really do like these. Uh, like I said, I've been using my RSP1A for a very long time, and I'll continue to use it. I'll probably add one of these to the shack, though, just for that better filtering down low, which don't really get down there that much, but since playing around with this, I've had a lot of fun with it. So anyway, tell me what you think down below in the comments. Do you have an SDR or an SDR Play? And tell me what your thoughts have been. As always, please subscribe if you have not. Give me that thumbs up because it does help the YouTube algorithm. I'm Josh KI6NAZ. I stream every Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and I'll talk to you later. See ya. So the SDR...